wow. There, hey, we, there go. we go. Yeah. Very That's cool. That's a jumper. Yep, yeah, just like that. Just keep the pressure on. Yep. Yeah. And we're going to bring them right up here to me. And we're going to do what you want to never do with a coconut. So we're going to bring them right in the boat. Shad tubes, minnow tubes, soft plastic grubs. Get serious about trout and landlocked king trolling with serious soft plastics from the Fish Hunt Shoot Production Store. Howdy folks, Cal Kellogg here. I'm, uh, I'm going to have some fun on this video, but uh, I'm telling you right now, I'm going to get some hate mail. I'm going to step on some people's toes. I'm, I'm going to hurt some people's feelings. So if you're one of those guys, get a box of Kleenex. Just relax. Everything's going to be okay, okay? So here's, here's how we're going to start. We're going to end up talking about kokanee fishing, but we're going to start out thinking about commercial salmon fishermen out in the ocean that target king salmon. They could be off the coast of Washington, Oregon, outside the Golden Gate, whatever. I've had the opportunity to fish with some of those guys, and I'm always spying on them when I'm out there. And you know what a commercial salmon troller in the ocean does? They keep things very, very, very simple. Um, they find fish that are feeding on bait and they show them rigged bait and they show them a few different spoons and they show them a few different hoochies and they catch a bunch of fish and they keep it simple because they're not out there to fool around. They're not out there to test things. They're not out there goofing around. They're out there to earn a living catching fish. Keep it simple. Find the fish, catch the fish. Simple stuff. They're fish. Kokanee fishing in lakes. It should be lots and lots and lots of fun. And uh, that's how I look at it. You know, I get all serious when I'm fishing for trout because I'm looking for big fish. But when I'm kokanee fishing, I'm looking to catch a lot of little hard fighting fish that taste great, that go into the smoker great. It's just a fun day on the water. And unfortunately, I see a lot of guys on Facebook, a lot of guys online here, there, and everywhere that try to make kokanee fishing way, way too complicated, okay? And that, that goes for lures and blades and a bunch of other stuff that goes into a successful day of kokanee fishing, you know, out on the water. It should be fun. Uh, kokanee, I look at them like the troller's panfish. Should be able to go out, catch a whole bunch of them, have a lot of laughs, you know, get a bite quickly. If you lose a fish, big deal. We lost a fish. We're going to catch another one in five minutes. We're going to laugh it off. We're going to play with a bunch of colorful lures and we're just going to have a good time. Um, I think one of the areas, you know, beyond lures and blades where guys like to get really, really complicated is when, when they're, they're dealing with their kokanee corn. Now, I am a very lighthearted kokanee fisherman. I don't take it super seriously, but I will say that I learned to kokanee fish from some of the very best anglers, some of the best guides, some of the best, you know, tournament guys, some of the best tackle manufacturers on the West Coast. I mean, I've fished with a bunch of very, very serious kokanee anglers, and uh, I've kind of developed my style of fishing from watching these guys. So let's, let's kind of apply this to kokanee corn. I'm actually going out kokanee fishing tomorrow for the first time in 2020, and I have some corn prepared. But guess what? I prepared this corn last year because unlike some people, you know, some guys online say, oh, you gotta throw out your corn every time you go fishing. Uh, no, you really don't. Here's some corn in its natural habitat. This is how I get it. I get three cans at a time and uh, I get this Lasur corn. I get it on Amazon and I'd like to tell you, well, I get this corn because it comes from Finland and it's better. No, that's not why I got it. That I got it. You know why I got it? I thought the can looked cool and it's shoe peg corn and I get three cans at a time for like eight bucks. Anyway, so first rule when it comes to corn, get corn that comes in a cool looking can like that. There you go. Now, here's what I do with my corn. 
pretty simple. I have three selections for tomorrow and I don't care if I'm going to Whiskey Town or New Maloney's or Bullard's Bar. Three. That's it. Three. One. Right here. That's the balance of the can. That is corn out of the can that's been frozen like 10 times with absolutely no scent on it. Corn out of the can. And guess what? It works. It works almost every day. And uh, you know, you pick out a firm one. If some of them are too soft because they're freezer burned, dig around in there. There's some firm ones in there. Guarantee it. Put them on the hook, catch a fish. Now my scented corn, these are just as old. And I have two. I like sweet scents. This has Procure Pure Anise on it. A little bit. That'll be my first choice tomorrow. Anise. I like the smell of it. I like black licorice. It's cool. Fish like it too. There you go. That's been frozen like 10 times. My other choice. This is a this is what I call the Vance Staplin Special, who uh, has caught a lot of kokanee. Um, his first choice of scent is no scent at all. He fishes the corn out of the can, and I've seen him catch some tremendous kokanee on that. His second choice, this is his trade secret, it's corn out of the can with caro syrup on it. And this is probably his third favorite, and I'm really in love with this one right here. What this is, is it's organic sugar, one spoonful, and sea salt, one spoonful. It's got the salty, sweet, the, uh, the salt gives it some toughness, hard to beat, dynamite. That's it. Plain, anise, sugar and salt for me. That's all I'm running. And then, you know, I hear these guys, well, you need to go to the store, you see. And you need to get the tuna, not the tuna in water. Get the tuna and oil. Put that on your corn. Well, these guys, they don't know how to read a scientific study because, let me break it to you fellas, fish, they live in water. Yes, they have a sense of smell. They don't swim around in oil. They don't know how to deal with oil. They can't smell oil. Just They can't do it. I can't jump over a house. They can't smell oil. They live in water. They can smell water soluble stuff. So if I hit the lake and the plain corn's not working and the anise corn's not working and my sugar and salt corn's not working, I get out my Procure. Best fish scent in the world. Why? Couple reasons. One, it's got UV included right in it. You think you need a UV lure and you don't have one? Put some Procure Super Gel on. Now you got a UV lure, okay? And if you read the label right here, right down here, where's that ball? It says, made with real bait, right here. And it says, brace yourself, supercharged with powerful amino acids and bite stimulants. It's science, guys. Procure worked this out. So if my three core scents, plain, salt and sugar and anise are not working. My backup choices are bloody tuna, not oil tuna out of the can, bloody tuna with the enhanced amino acids that stimulate strikes and the UV qualities it adds to the lure and anise krill, which is basically anise shrimp. That's all I'm gonna have on the boat. I'm gonna catch a limit of kokanee tomorrow. I 99% of the time when I go after kokanee, I limit out. That's all the sense I use. And, 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 and truth be told, I didn't hold it up right. Truth be told, I would be just as confident tomorrow if I had nothing but this cool looking can of unopened corn. I would pop it open. I would find the marks. I would put it on my lures. I would start off with bright stuff early. If I get a high sun, I would go to more subtle stuff. And guess what? I would go home with a limit of kokanee. Don't overthink it. Go out there and have fun. And remember, tuna in the can, it's good for making a sandwich out of. If you want to put scent on your corn, spend the five bucks. 
get a bottle of Procure. It actually works. Anyway, let's have a little bit of fun here. Don't send me a bunch of hate mail. I don't care if you caught a kokanee in 1962 with bumblebee oil can tuna on your hook. That's great. You have confidence in it. Confidence means everything. By all means, stock up, buy a case of that oil pack tuna and a bunch of Jolly Green Giant corn and uh, go get those kokanee. But, uh, if you want to go out, you want to have maximum fun, don't make it overcomplicated. Get some pro cure, get some corn, get some colorful little lures, and go out and catch some salmon. Have a great dinner, put some in the smoker. You're going to be a happy guy. Anyway, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe, please hit that subscribe button. And uh, if you want some great trout tackle, click on over to the fish hunt shoot production store and hit that little bell down there that way you'll get a notification every time i'm going to talk about you know oil tuna in a can or anything else i'm talking about here on youtube anyway i've had enough fun for now i'm kel kellogg i'm signing off go get your corn get some sandwich bags lube it up and get ready to catch some fish because we got a great 2020 ahead things are just getting started guys you have a great day i'm out of here